Hello, and welcome to this fourth grade episode of Math Matters. I'm Miss Ott, and today we are going to compare different representations of data. For today's lesson, you will need a pencil and paper. Go ahead and get those items while we wait. Today, you will be learning to interpret and compare two different representations of the same data. On the screen, you can see a bar graph and pictograph. Both of these representations show favorite ice cream flavors of some children. But what does it mean to interpret and compare? It means that we will use the representations to get information and then think about what is the same and different about the ways we are seeing the data. You will know that you are on your way to meeting the learning goal when you can communicate what you are learning from the graph, communicate the similarities and differences between the data representations, and can choose which data representation you think best fits the data and share why. Throughout the lesson today, you will be interpreting and comparing and sharing your thinking either in words or in writing. When you do this, you are a communicator and a creative and critical thinker. This is part of a picto or picture graph. What do you notice about it? Share your thinking out loud. What are some questions you have or what do you wonder about the pictograph? Share your questions out loud. Now we have some new information. What do we know now? We now know that this pictograph is showing information about the water used. Now we have more information. What do we know now? We now know that each picture in the graph represents one gallon. What do we know now? We can now see that this pictograph is telling us about water uses in our homes and that one of those water uses is using sink faucets. Now we can see how much water taking a shower and washing clothes in a washing machine uses. Whatever is here uses a lot of water. I wonder what it could be. What do you think? Now we have all the information needed in our pictograph. Now it's time to interpret the pictograph. Write down three things that you can learn from this pictograph. Maybe you wrote down ideas like flushing the toilet uses 19 gallons of water or taking a shower uses 12 gallons. Or maybe you noticed that other uses of water in our home only use two gallons. What surprises you about this data or what questions do you have?
Maybe you were surprised that flushing the toilet uses more water than taking a shower. I'm also wondering what other uses of water in our homes is this graph referring to? Here is the same data about water usage in our home as a bar graph. What are some things that are the same about the two representations? Maybe you noticed that both representations tell me what we're measuring in, gallons of water. On the bar graph, it's listed as the label on the y-axis, and in the table, it's the key. Perhaps you also noticed that the labels are the same. In the bar graph, they're listed as a key below the x-axis, and in the table, they're listed down the left-hand side. Maybe you also noticed that the number above the bar matches the number of gallons listed in the table. For example, for taking a shower, I see 12 gallons in the pictograph, and the number 12 is above the bar for taking a shower. What are some of the differences between the two representations? Share them out loud or write them on your paper. One difference is that the bars go up vertically in the bar graph, but in the pictograph, the gallons are listed horizontally. Another difference is that I can see each gallon that it takes in the table, but in the bar graph, I can't see each individual gallon. I can only see where the bar stops to tell me the total. What other differences did you notice? Both representations show the same data. Which one do you prefer? Why do you prefer that one? Communicate your thinking out loud. Now, let's use some critical thinking skills. If you are trying to convince someone to use less water at home, which representation would you show them? Why would you choose that one? Share your thinking out loud. Let's get some information or interpret a new graph. This bar graph shows the number of zoo visitors to the animal exhibits at the zoo. On your paper, write three true statements according to this graph. Take a look at the table. Does the data in the table match the data on the bar graph? How do you know?
By comparing the number of visitors in each set, I can see that the data does not match. In the table, it says that there were 85 visitors to the gorillas, but according to the bar graph, there were 80. So these two data sets do not match. Does the data in this table match the data in the bar graph? These data sets do not match either. I can see that in the table, there are 85 visitors to the tigers, but according to the bar graph, there were only 70, and that in the table, it says that 55 people visited the bears, but on the bar graph, I can see that 50 visited the bears. These two data sets do not match. Here is a table with some missing information. With the information that we have, does the data in this table match the data in the bar graph? So far, the data is a match. What numbers would we have to add to the table so that it continues to match the data in the bar graph. Write the two numbers down on your paper. The bar graph tells us that there were 45 visitors to the rhinos and 65 visitors to the giraffes. The data in the table now matches the data in the bar graph. Let's reflect on how you interpreted and compared two different data representations of the same data during our lesson today. You communicated what you were learning from the graph. Today, we used a pictograph and a bar graph. You also communicated the similarities and differences between the data representations. In today's lesson, we compared a pictograph to a bar graph and a bar graph to a table. You also chose which data representation you thought would best fit the data and told us why. You did this when you were thinking about which data representation you would share with someone who you were trying to convince to use less water at home. How are you a communicator and creative and critical thinker during our lesson today? You are a communicator when you were sharing what you were learning from the graphs. You were a creative and critical thinker when you were comparing the two different representations of the same data. Thanks for joining me for this fourth grade episode of Math Matters. I'm Miss Ott. I hope you have a great day and keep on counting.